Welcome back to the Gridiron Expert. We're continuing our college football bowl game predictions today, and we are predicting our five New Year's Day bowl games, including the two college football playoff games that will determine which two teams face will face off in the national championship game on January 8th. So we're not going to waste any time predicting these games. We're going to break down all five games and share our predictions and share our current bowl record. We are currently sitting at 22-12 and 12 right now, which isn't too bad. Hopefully that will definitely increase when these five games finish up on New Year's Day. And our five New Year's Day bowl games, always the best, are Outback Bowl between Michigan and South Carolina, the Peach Bowl between number 12, Central Florida, and number 7, Auburn, the Citrus Bowl between number 14, Notre Dame, and number 17, LSU, and then our two college football playoff games, the Rose Bowl between number 3, Georgia, and number 2, Oklahoma, and then the Sugar Bowl between number 4, Alabama, and number one, Clemson. So this is going to be a great day at college football. It's all day starting at 11 o'clock with the Outback Bowl and finishing up later that night with the Sugar Bowl. And like I said, these two games here will determine who will play in the national championship game. So we're going to go ahead and start up here with the Outback Bowl between Michigan and South Carolina. And you've got to give credit to Will Muschamp over here with the Gamecocks. Turn around this program. Once Steve Spurrier left, they were kind of in a tailspin. I think they went 3-9. and nine. He came in, resurrected the program, got them to a bowl game last year, went 6-7, and seven, and then this year really took a major step forward, getting to 8-4 and four in second place in the SEC East. So you got to give a lot of credit to Will Muschamp and what he's done for this program. He's definitely going to continue building. Uh, I really expect South Carolina to be a major threat in the SEC East uh, in, the, in the coming years. Michigan, on the other hand, had a bit of a uh, disappointing year. I predicted them to go 8-4, and four, which is what they did. You know, I just didn't really think that they had the talent this season to compete like they did last year in the Big Ten. They lost their key games, uh, their rivals, Michigan State, Penn State, and Ohio State. Uh, but overall, not a horrible year, not a horrible bowl game for the Wolverines here uh, facing off against South Carolina. And I'm really interested in this game. I expect this game to be very low, uh, low scoring. I think South Carolina has the quarterback edge here with Jake Bentley. He's been really impressing me in SEC play, and I think they own the quarterback edge over Michigan's Brandon Peters, who is just a freshman in Michigan dealing with all those quarterback injuries. But Michigan owns the running back edge. They have a three-header monster with Karan Higdon, Chris Evans, and Ty Isaac, all at running back, all very capable running backs. And I also believe that Michigan owns the defensive edge in this game. I think kind of Michigan being battle-tested, facing off with some very good programs, Michigan State, Penn State, Ohio State, among uh, others, I feel they're more battle-tested. And the young defense that I was very concerned about in the preseason has really stepped up and progressed as the season went on. They just weren't able to get the job done in some of those key games. But I like Michigan to go in here and get their ninth win of the season in the Outback Bowl. I expect it to be low-scoring, like I said. It's going to be a defensive battle, but when it comes down to it, I think Michigan owns that edge. And Jim Harbaugh, you never want to underestimate him, uh, especially after being down to so much this season. So this should be a really fun one to watch and a great day to kick off uh, the new year. And then the Peach Bowl, another New Year's Six Bowl between number 12 Central Florida and number 7 Auburn. Central Florida, you've got to give, once again, a lot of credit to their head coach, Scott Frost, who, as we all know, will be coaching this game, but has already accepted the position as head coach at Nebraska. So he's kind of been working two jobs now, preparing for the Peach Bowl, but also recruiting uh, at Nebraska. But, you know, he got this team to an undefeated season. They were 0-12 just a few years ago, so what a turnaround for them. And they have the number one offense in the entire nation, led by a very great quarterback in McKenzie Milton. I'm very excited to see how he goes up against this Auburn defense, who is once again one of the best defenses in the entire nation. They're also very capable in offense, though, have an experienced quarterback in Jarrett Stidham. And Carryon Johnson will be back from injury uh, after getting injured in that SEC championship game. So it's going to be very interesting to see here how uh, you know, Central Florida's offense goes up against that Auburn defense, and uh, you know, can Auburn's offense with their quarterback and, and their ground game can they exploit that Central Florida defense, who really has been fairly well this season, uh, averaging about twenty, letting up twenty-five points per game, but over the past two games, letting up huge numbers to South Florida and Memphis in the American Athletic Conference championship game. Emotions will be riding high. Central Florida wants to complete an undefeated season, send off Scott Frost uh, in a good way. Auburn, on the other hand, though, they just lost the SEC championship game. They were one win away from playing in the college football uh, playoff. So will they be motivated enough to go in here and win this game, or will Central Florida have enough motivation uh, to go over there, override Auburn, and complete an undefeated season? I like Auburn in this game. I expect it to be close. It has the potential to be high scoring. But in the end, I don't know if uh, Central Florida's offense will be able to create enough points, enough production against this very stiff Auburn defense. I like the Tigers to go in there and get the win. And then the Citrus Bowl between number 14 Notre Dame 
and number 17 LSU. This is once again going to be a really, really fun game to watch. I'm, you know, these two teams met just a few years ago, uh, and it was obviously a great game. Then it's going to be a great game. Now we'll start over here with Notre Dame, who lost two of their last three in very uninspiring fashion. They lost to Miami in, in, a, in blowout fashion, lost to Stanford in blowout fashion, and narrowly beat Navy in between those two games. So really not a great end to the season. LSU, on the other hand, won three straight to close the season, won six of the last seven to complete a 9-3 and three season, which is a huge uh, step in the right direction for Ed Ogeron's team. Notre Dame has a very capable quarterback, just like these other teams, and Brandon Wimbush, who's also very dynamic on his feet. Not the best passer, but very dynamic on the feet. He will also be missing some of his key wide receivers and tight ends, so they're going to be kind of weak in that position. LSU, though, will also have some weaknesses at the linebacker position, and uh, they're going to be without their key outside linebacker, Arden Key. So, how will that affect LSU going up against this Notre Dame offense where if Brandon Wimbush can't pick up the slack, Josh Adams will, their dynamic running back. I like Notre Dame to go in and get the win in this one. I think they just have too much on offense. LSU's quarterback, Danny Etlin, can sometimes be a little unpredictable, not as great as he can be. They obviously have a great running back in Darius Geis, who if Notre Dame's defense is prepared, Darius Geis could run all over this fighting Irish defense. But I like Notre Dame to get the win in the Citrus Bowl, complete a 10-win season. I just feel their offense is going to be too much for LSU's defense here, uh, and I really do think that Brandon Winbush is going to have a pretty good day against this uh, LSU D. And then the games we've all been waiting for, the College Football Playoff, the Rose Bowl, and the Sugar Bowl, these t uh, four teams all fighting for a spot in the national championship game. Well, of course, start here with the Rose Bowl. Georgia and Oklahoma, like I said, with all these other uh, teams up here, you've got to give credit to the head coaches where it's due. Kirby Smart coming in at Georgia and just turning around the program completely. I mean, Mark Rick had done a great job, but they didn't think he was doing enough. Fired him. Kirby Smart comes in, doesn't have a great leader last year, wins the Liberty Bowl. Now he's got them in the cultural playoffs sitting at 12-1. Uh, and one. So, I mean, this has been a really great year for the Bulldogs, and a lot of that has to go to their defense. You know, he came over from Alabama as defensive coordinator, so we knew that was going to be his strength. They've also got a pretty, really good offense here. we got Jake Fromm, the freshman quarterback, who did a great job coming in from Jacob Easton. You know, how different would the season be if Jacob Easton had been at quarterback? We don't know, but Jake Fromm has done a great job. And, of course, you can't forget Nick Chubb and Sony Michelle, the dynamic running back duo there, uh, who could have a big day against his Oklahoma defense, who really hasn't been great for most of the season. Picked it up there towards the end. Uh, the last half of the season into the Big 12 championship game, the defense has looked a lot better. But will it be enough to shut down this Georgia offense, who's put up 28 points against Auburn in the SEC championship game? Now, for Oklahoma, on the other side, you've got the Heisman quarterback, uh, Baker Mayfield. But as we all know, he's been battling some illness now. Will he be 100% for this game, uh, the first playoff game of the day? Will he be 100%? He's missed some media days uh, for the Rose Bowl. He's been practicing. He, he hasn't missed a practice, but he said himself that he wasn't feeling 100%. So how will he do against this Georgia defense? Will uh, his illness and uh, what's been going on with him, will that slow him down and affect him? Oklahoma, of course, has a very solid uh, crew of wide receivers. And Lincoln Riley, like I said, he's done a great job coming in from Bob Stoops. We, that was very unexpected news early in the summer. But he came in, didn't miss a beat. Uh, one of the youngest head coaches in college football today. And he's got them sitting for a spot in the national championship game. So really the key storyline for this game is going to be, can Oklahoma's uh, dynamic offense go up against a very tough Georgia defense? Can they put the points on them? You know, it's, it's really hard to score against this Georgia defense, and we've seen that uh, for all, all the teams that Georgia has defeated this year. Auburn, as we know, went and defeated Georgia early in the season, hung a little over 40 points on them, but then, of course, met again, only were able to put up seven. Oklahoma's defense, though, like I said, you know, had that shootout against Oklahoma State uh, early on the season. Their defense has not looked great for the most part, so that's going to be the key here. Can George Oklahoma's defense shut down Georgia, and can Georgia's defense shut down Oklahoma's offense? I expect this game to be kind of mildly scoring. I don't really expect any team to exceed 30 points here. I like Oklahoma to win this game in the Rose Bowl in a close one. I know a lot of people will be disappointed for me to say that. Uh, as I did not have high expectations for Georgia this year. They definitely proved me wrong. It's going to be a heck of a game. I like Oklahoma to win this game, though, get to the first national championship game since 2009. And I know Commissioner Doak and all Sooner fans will be very excited if this ends up happening. So I like Oklahoma to go in and win the Rose Bowl in a very good game. And then the Sugar Bowl, Alabama-Clemson Part 3. The past two national championship games have been Alabama versus Clemson. They're 1-1 one and one in both of those games. Alabama winning two years ago, Clemson winning just last year. And a lot of people didn't have high expectations for Clemson this season. You know, they lost to Sean Watson, lost some good uh, key defensive players. You know, a lot of people thought they would take a step back, including myself. I had them going 10-2. and two. 
but they're uh, only a one-loss team. That one loss coming to Syracuse, uh, kind of a fluke there. So will Clemson be, have enough to defeat Alabama, who narrowly made the college football playoff over mid some controversy? Ohio State, of course, beating Wisconsin. Some people thought the Buckeyes should have gotten in over Alabama, who didn't even play for their conference championship game. Uh, but here Alabama is sitting at number four. They just thought they had a better resume. And in my opinion, I think part of it was due to ratings. I think much more people would want to see an Alabama-Clemson game and not an Ohio State-Clemson game where Clemson shut out the Buckeyes last year. But this is bound to be a very exciting game here. Clemson, as we all know, will not uh, underestimate Alabama. And we know Nick Saban and his uh, Crimson Tide are very angry for people doubting them, uh, you know, for not being able to make the SEC championship game. And hit, they want to go in and prove they are the best of the best, as we've all seen for the majority of this past uh, season. And will Alabama will be able to go in and take control over this Clemson offense led by Kelly Bryant, really who has been a great replacement for Deshaun Watson. I feel that Alabama does have the quarterback edge here in Jalen Hurts. He didn't look great in that season finale against Auburn, but I think dual threat-wise, I think Jalen Hurts, more, a uh, little more, more experience. He's had more experience in these big games. I like him as the quarterback edge here. Uh, defensively, it's going to be a fun defensive battle. Clemson has one of the best front seven in the entire nation. Alabama's defense, and we all know it's Alabama's defense, how well they've been playing this season with the exception of just a few games. Uh, they've been dealing with some injuries, as we all know, so it's really going to come down. I think it could come down to who has the ball last. Uh, Alabama, though, you never want to underrate Nick Sa- underestimate Nick Saban and his Crimson Tide. I think Alabama wins this game uh, in an upset fashion over Clemson. Despite, you know, Alabama is favored in this game. But seed-wise, Clemson, the number one seed, top team in the nation, uh, reigning national champions. I think Alabama goes in, gets the job done in the Sugar Bowl, and that will set up an Oklahoma versus Alabama national championship. Now, of course, it would be really cool to see a uh, Alabama-Georgia national championship, an All-SEC national championship. To some, that would be really good. To some, that would be you know miserable. But I'd like Oklahoma and Baker Mayfield to face off against Nick Saban and the Tide in the national championship on January 8th. So we're going to see if all these things end up working out for us on New Year's Day. It's going to be a great day of football. I'm very excited to check these out. We will know our national championship by the end of the night. And of course, we'll have videos about that leading up to that game on January 8th. So make sure you get ready. It's a full day of college football coming your way on New Year's Day. Thank you for watching. Please continue to like, comment, and subscribe. And we will see you next time on the Gridiron Expert.